Tonight's sports report proudly brought to you by IMB. Good evening, St George Illawarra will be looking to continue its climb up the NRL ladder this Sunday when it takes on the Tigers at Oki Jubilee. The Dragons will be without Trent Barrett for the clash, despite pressure for him to make an early return from injury. Mark Gaznia looks set to play after recovering from a virus. The Dragons have wrapped up their preparations for their clash with the West Tigers and are confident of maintaining their recent winning form. You know, for us to win, I think we're definitely going to have to score a few points because they're a real exciting team. To, uh, to watch play and they throw the ball around a lot. Coach Nathan Brown will wait until game day to name his final team, but one player who won't take the field is Trent Barrett. He'd love to play for us this week, obviously, and love to play for New South Wales the following week, but uh, unfortunately he's uh, not fit for us this week, so I'm not too sure what'll happen in, uh, in the selectors' mind. Barrett remains realistic about his odds of gaining selection in the Blues team for State of Origin 3, despite selectors backing down from their earlier statement that he must play this week to be any chance. Obviously I'd love to play in the third origin, but you know it's going to make it really hard if I don't play this week. And Kick-off at Oki Jubilee is at 2.30 on Sunday. Illawarra Hawks star Glenn Saville leaves tomorrow to join the Australian team for a training camp on the Gold Coast. Saville and his Boomers teammates are preparing for the upcoming international season with a side set to play China, Lithuania and New Zealand in a Four Nations tournament in August. It's expected the tournament will become an annual event with hosting duties alternating between Australia and China. After one of his best seasons on record last year, Saville is looking to use the Boomers camp as a springboard to this year's NBL competition. You know, I've built up a lot of that confidence playing with the Boomers and a lot of that international game, you know, they play at a different level what we play here domestically and when I come back you know I kind of want to do those sort of things in in our games with the Hawks. Wollongong's best female soccer players are a step closer to competing at the top level again with two Illawarra associations joining forces to push for a return to the Super League. Negotiations with Soccer New South Wales have already begun and a final decision from the governing body is expected in October. It's one of the fastest growing sports in the Illawarra, but the area's female soccer players have had little to aim for since the Wollongong Wolves pulled out of the women's Super League competition. We've lost uh, probably in the vicinity of 30 to 40 players to other areas that are still playing uh, in the Super League competition. The Illawarra Women's Association, together with the Illawarra Junior Association, is working to improve the standard of soccer in the region by putting its hand up to re-enter the state's premier female competition. The Illawarra area is growing as quick as anybody in the, in the girls' section and the, the numbers are increasing at such a rate that we need to have a pathway for those girls. The Wollongong Wolves Super League team folded in February after administration problems led to a loss of players. Organisers of the proposed new team are confident they can avoid the pitfalls that led to the Wolves' downfall. Hopefully uh, we'll have done enough to encourage Soccer New South Wales to allow us back into the competition. And uh, if that is happens, we, we would hope that we would get some of those girls back. The combined associations are now working to secure funding to establish the new team, with Soccer New South Wales due to make a decision in October. Terry Aylett, Win News. Shoalhaven Golf Club will fight for its survival in the statewide A-grade pennant when it travels to Goulburn this Sunday. Goulburn was too good for the South Coast champions in the first round at Shoalhaven earlier this month, taking the playoff five matches to two. Shoalhaven must reverse that result this weekend if it's to win through to the next round of the statewide amateur championship. To Greyhound Racing and the finalists for next week's $25,000 Breeders' Incentive Cup have been decided. Arapina Miss will jump from box one after qualifying fastest in last night's heats, covering 580 metres in 29.53 seconds. Arika Bell was second fastest in 29.5, uh, sorry, 85 seconds, but will jump from box four after an unfavourable draw. And that's tonight's sport. That should be a good race too. All the weekend weather details after the break. Then the writings on the wall for an art show with a political flavour.
few more showers today, hopefully filling up the region's dams. To the satellite photo, a high has developed over Tasmania, ridging across New South Wales. Tomorrow, the high near Tasmania will extend a ridge over much of New South Wales. Southeasterly winds will bring a few showers to coastal parts, clearing in the far south. On Sunday, a high in the Tasman will extend a ridge to another high in the Bight. To our rainfall figures today, and the best uh, rainfall figures was Ulladulla, which got to 10 millimetres. Wollongong had just one. Temperatures for today, and Wollongong peaked at 16 degrees, 10 degrees for Barrel, 13 in Nowra and Ulladulla, then 15 degrees for Maria, Naruma, Bega and Marimbula. The forecast for the Illawarra and the Highlands, isolated showers chiefly in the morning, a cool to cold Saturday, light to moderate east to southeasterly winds. Ahead of us, more rain now right through until Tuesday. For the south coast, the forecast comes up this way, fine apart from isolated clearing showers in the far north, a cool to cold start to the weekend with light to moderate east to southeasterly winds. Seas running at one to two metres on a two to three metre swell, the first tide tomorrow a low at 11 minutes past five, the first high a few minutes past 11. So for the first day of the weekend, wet for all the golfers and tennis players, 17 degrees the maximum for Wollongong, Batemans Bay and Bega, just 12 degrees in Barrel, 16 in Nowra. A collection of stencil art is taking over at the Wollongong City Gallery. The Wall Works exhibition documents the work of artists from around Australia. The craft of stencil making was used to create propaganda in World War II and to promote political uprising in the 1960s. These days you're more likely to find the images on billboards promoting events and parties with much of the work reflecting youth street culture. The exhibition will be on show until September. In 60 minutes on Sunday night at 7.30, who or what killed King Tut? Tara Brown with a wrap on one of history's most fascinating cold cases. And that is the news from across the region for this Friday night. News headlines can be found on our website, winnet.com.au. From the Win News team, good night. This has been a Win News presentation from Australia's largest regional television network.